All right, what's up, everybody? This is Ingram, and I'm one of the Minecrafters, and we are back with another episode of Let's Build an Airship. This is episode two, and today what we're going to do is, uh, you notice there's only four things here. Um, we're going to kind of break this down. This is very weird to wrap your head around, but it's going to be the engine for the whole frame ship that we're going to build, um, and it, it it's really odd. We're going to go through each of the, the basic setups, and then we're going to go through the frame, and then we're going to build the whole thing. But um, if you need to pause this video, this is kind of weird to wrap your head around. We're using a motor to push a motor to push a frame. So it's kind of, it's a little wonky. But anyway, we'll take you through the whole thing, and hopefully it will all make sense. If it doesn't, leave a comment. We're going to do episode three anyway. So we'll figure anything out in episode three that we kind of missed or didn't cover um, to your satisfaction in episode two. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the motors for forward, backward, left, and right. And the pattern here is is it's going to look like this. I'll show you in a second. But these are going to be, um, there will be four different spots we're going to put this in. And they're just going to kind of rotate like we're, this way will be forward. And then we'll flip the whole thing. This way it will be facing this way. It will be backward. Flip the whole thing left. Flip the whole thing right. And stuff like that. So what we need to do is, in order to make an inch, it's basically like an inchworm drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to have this motor facing, uh, you know what, maybe maybe be better to demonstrate this with just a single drive. That might help. Okay, so I think this is going to be a good idea. Let's take a look at what an inchworm drive is actually going to look like. Like what the deuce we're actually trying to do here. So what I've done... Um, the format, if you remember from episode one, these yellow things are just covers. The red things are panels. Um, I'll explain why this is going to be something that automatically triggers a frame motor when it moves into its, um, basically into the way. So what we're going to do is um, this is going to inch slowly upward. So the first one we'll place is we're going to use a cover because we're going to have a motor here and a motor here. They're not going to be faced this way, but that's basically what they're going to do. This motor right here is going to move this other motor upwards, okay? And then that other motor, once it's moved up, is actually going to get triggered again by that lever, and it's going to shift the whole frame up, and that will move by default. It'll actually slide the other block the other motor down back into place and basically reset the system but now we're one block higher so what we'll do is we'll put this one first remember you need a screwdriver to rotate these and basically we want to get this thing facing the exact opposite direction there we go okay now remember that this little dial here this little thingy little line um, points upward or points in the direction that the drive is going to move all the frames. So we're going to rotate this. It's pointing upward now. And so now when this motor runs, it's going to take the attached frames and shift them up. Okay. Next, what we have to do is get this motor itself to move. And we're going to move that up. This will all make, I, trust me, it will make more sense in a minute. We're going to rotate this guy. Oh, poop. There we go. So now this guy right here, we'll rotate him too. He's facing this motor, right? I'm just going to pause here. I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to do some graphics for you. This motor is facing the second motor, and it's going to push it up whenever it runs. Then what's going to happen is as soon as it gets pushed up, it's going to be triggered by the redstone signal from the lever, and then that motor is going to run. And when that motor runs, it rips the whole frame system up in front of it. So let's let's put. Um, I'm really sorry. This is like so awkward to explain. Let's take a battery that's not empty. This is just a shortcut way to power this for this demo. Let's see. We don't need much. We just need the blue lights to come on. Remember that these share. So this blue light is on. And this blue light should come on in a minute here. I'm just going to turn it to day. And, oh, you know what? This is actually a good thing. This is something to watch out for. 
they will not share frames will not share frame motors will not share power on their moving side so uh, this is the moving side with the arrow Bluetricity does not get passed along in front of this block so I'm gonna cheat for a second here and I'm gonna get some blue electric wire and we should see this thing flicker to life boom there we go I'm actually gonna leave that there um, you know what we can put we'll bring the ground along with it but we can carry this whole I didn't put covers down the bottom remember that so it's gonna it's gonna drag the ground up with it but um, that'll be fine so what we're gonna do now is this motor is going to shift this motor up and then it's going to shift all the frames up so let's let's just do this let me stop talking so as soon as we click this lever boom do you see how that happened the first one moves that motor up into place then that motor gets triggered and because it's angled that way so I think if we I wouldn't advise doing this but there we go see what happened I, I totally if you rotate it I mean that's let me just put this back it's not actually what we wanted to do oh but here you can see this one's gonna push the motor up and this motor is gonna push the frames up so you need both of them and this is this is basically your interim drive so this guy will go here shift it up let me do that again this guy is gonna push this motor up this lever is gonna trigger the motor when it's up here and it's gonna trigger the motor and the motors gonna pull the frames ready trigger pull there you go alright and see we did actually we did bring the ground with us alright so that is the the basic essentials of an interim drive now I'm gonna show you how to set up each direction using that interim drive setup alright so here we are this is the interim setup for the four um, planar directions that is forward backward left and right and the drive is gonna go like this we have this one facing this is gonna face the interim drive motor okay and we're gonna have another one being pushed remember the setup here if this is motor one this is motor two we'll just call them motor one and motor two motor one pushes motor two motor two pushes the frames okay we we'll use that format for the rest of the video hopefully that made sense this is gonna be motor one it's gonna push motor two which is gonna move the frames and they need to be going the same direction so it should look like this and we can break that so you can see the arrow on this side of motor one should match the direction of the arrow of the motor on motor two right motor one pointing that way uh, motor two pointing that way all right so the interim template for up we actually already have seen but remember motor one is gonna push motor two motor one needs to be have its arrow pointing down motor two needs to have its arrow pointing down and it remember the frame motors go in the opposite direction of that little arrow and we can look at the back here there you go your arrow is facing up and last but not least you have the same setup for your inching down remember the motor one is going to push motor two motor one needs to have its little arrow facing upwards because we're going to be coming from the up direction and shoving things down and motor two needs to have the same and needs to be facing the same way So now that you're thoroughly confused, let me confuse you even more. This is the engine frame, the engine compartment, if you want, that we are going to build the motors on. We're going to put all the interim components into this thing to make an omnidirectional interim drive. ODID. Now I got to come up with a better. I got to come up with a better name for that. Um, the yellow things, remember, represent covers. The red things re represent panels and we're gonna build one of these in a second but I'm gonna pause here so you can see what's going on this is gonna have the up motor is gonna be right here and all the other omnidirectional motors are gonna be represented by these other four covers remember covers let motors slide oh my goodness I just broke that oh my goodness break all the things well if you missed part one this is how you put covers and frames back on let's just do this 
Okay. On this side, we're going to have the other side of the omnidirectional planar guys, that is left, right, up, down, and we're also going to have our down motor. That's right there. Okay. Okay, so let's actually build one of these things now. And the easiest way to do this is to be off the ground. I'm going to bring some frames over this way. And I'll show you what we're going to do. Did that break? No, it didn't. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is build like a, a hollow 9x9 nine nine square with the center empty. Okay, and 9x9 nine nine, I meant 3x3. Three three. And leave this guy empty in the middle. Then you're going to bring down arms like this that are going to wrap around. If you've ever seen Tron, this is like one of those destroyer programs. Okay, so now your frame system should look like this. You have the 3x3 three three hollow square here, and then you have a little arm coming down, and another little arm coming down. Now what we need to do is we need to cover with covers, and I'm going to use yellow for covers. We're going to cover the insides of these because there's going to be a motor sitting here, and that motor needs to be able to slide freely. It doesn't want to. We don't want it to try and get stuck to any of these frames. Remember, frames are sticky, so we're going to have to slide around in here. And so we'll put a pattern like this. Let me pause for this so you can see what's going on. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to take our motors, and we're going to set up left, right, and forward and backward. And this is going to be, these two are going to be a pain. We can see the other ones, but let's go like this. Okay, remember the direction. This is facing the wrong way. Now it's facing the right way. Remember, the motor will move in the direction of the arrow. So this is going to be our back. And, oops. There we go. Look at that. I don't even need to change it. This is going to be our forward. It's going to shift the whole frame set forward. Then we're going to do this guy, and he needs to be facing inward. And this guy, oops, like that. Okay. So t if you break this, which I'm not going to do, if you if you were to break this one, all of these arrows are pointing in on all these motors. These are technically motor two of the motor one, motor two interim setup. This is motor two that we just put in place, and they are all pointing inward into this um, center here. Okay, so we can go ahead and we're going to button this up because when that motor gets shoved inward, it's going to stick to this one, and it's going to use this one to shift the entire engine casing. Now remember, in order for your airship or whatever in the world you're building, in order for it to move, it has to be connected to this main engine compartment. And the entire ship has to connect at least one time to this block or the whole thing will not work. Actually, your engine might move in the middle of your ship and not actually move your ship, which would be kind of herp derp, right? So next we're going to put the motor one setups on all these. And this is where it really is going to be a pain. And um, if you have scaffolding, this will be good. I'm just going to kind of like make a little platform for myself here. Remember, we're going to put motor one. So let's put motor one on that drive right there. In order to do that, we have to just come around here. We need this guy to be facing the other way. There we go. Remember that this is now the bottom, and you can tell this little bar um, that shows your power in your redstone is going to be the bottom. So now we're facing this guy, and now we just need to... This is technically going to try and move this engine down, which we don't want, so we're going to have to rotate it. I'm going to drop down here for that. Boom. There we go. Look at that. I love it when it works in one shot. This guy, remember the arrow? They all just, if you get confused, just remember the little arrow things need to all point the same direction. The motor on this side, the arrow is pointing back off that way, right? Go over here. This arrow is pointing back off that way. So this is motor one. It's going to shove motor two into the middle. Motor two is going to get triggered and pull the whole frame, and the whole frame is going to shift that way. And motor two will slide back into place. Okay, let's do the next one. 
and this is going to be another motor one motor two setup this time we're going to move this motor right here we just need to flip this guy right around and there we go and now you gotta remember what in the world this one was doing okay this one's gonna be a slightly more tricky because you can't see the little arrow but the arrows all are the same okay this is arrows pointing back this way it's the opposite of the frame motor arrow sorry that didn't really make too much sense the little dial the arrow on the dial is pointing back that way this arrow is pointing in okay so we're gonna push this is motor one we're gonna push this this motor is gonna shove this motor in and that's the interim for that side let's make it run run out of time here in the world okay same thing this is a f exact flip of the other side we're gonna push this one here and we might as well now you know what I'll do them one at a time I've done this a lot, so it makes sense to me, but probably won't make sense to you. And there we go. Arrow's pointing that way. Remember, that's the direction that we want to shove this motor, so that's all set. And now we just need to... Yeah, there we go. Put this guy here. We need to flip him directly around. But we need to shove him... Ugh. So probably hate. There we go. Oh, but there we go. That was a lie. There we go. Okay. Remember, arrow, arrow, match that junk up. All right. So then we have left, right. Everything's good. Up, left, right, forward, and backward can all be used now. So let's add a little bit of love handle on the back here, and we're gonna do our up and down drives. Now remember, we need covers to make the motor slide. So we're gonna do this one. We're gonna do um, right now because it'll be easier. We can actually see it. Whoa! Did I just do that right? No, that's right. And then we're gonna push this guy. Oh yeah! There you go. There's your up. Right? Now we're going to put down. We'll put it on the exact opposite side. This one's going to have to be set up like this. And Oh, snap. Boom. There we go. That one's facing the right way. And now we need to set up the motor one for that one. Make sure the arrows are pointing the same direction. There we go. So this should be down. This is going to shove this motor down. Then that motor is going to drag all the frames down with it and reset itself in the process. Okay, guys. Here we go. We're close. We are close. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come on the inside here slap a panel doesn't matter which side and this is going to be the signal trigger for each of these motors as they come in um, the motor is going to get pushed into the middle it's gonna when it gets pushed into the middle it's gonna immediately get slapped by this redstone signal coming from this guy which is going to trigger it again and cause it to move all the frames so we're gonna slide in get triggered slide out okay so at this point we are actually almost legit let's just wire up a few things here okay so I was just gonna cut out and do a whole bunch of stuff and then come back but then I realized that this is a let's build and I asked for some feedback and got it pretty much right away you guys want to see me think through this so what I, what what we're trying to do before I do that what we're trying to do now is we need to power this stuff and there are a couple ways to do that we need um, we technically I mean we could just go around and slap these things everywhere and then make them all connected but that wastes a lot of resources and 
it's not really what I want to do. I want to build this so that people that are starting out can build it. Um, so we want to use as little resource as possible. So the other difficulty is, if you remember, these things will not share power with each other from this side with the arrow on it. So this motor and this motor will not, um, or actually, this motor and this motor will not share each other's power. So it's kind of a pain. So we basically need to wire each of these things into power um, almost individually. The other thing is, too, is these things will charge if we put a box here and not up here or the other way around if we put a box here and not down here then technically these things can charge because this one will move up it'll get charged really quick it'll move down it'll transfer that charge but the risk is that you if you use a motor too much it will drain itself out and you will not be able to um, like the motor won't go so like if you're using if you put a box here and didn't directly connect it to this for starters this wouldn't work because why the arrow of this one is pointing at this one so these two can't share which is is kind of annoying um, but if you didn't directly charge this one if you like kinda charge this one and then relied on this guy getting charged up here then it's either gonna slow your machine down because you have to it'll move it up and then you have to wait for it to charge before it can move back down or you'll you'll drain one of these out and the engine will get stuck up there with no power so you don't want that either um, that becomes more of a problem over here where this guy can get isolated right if we if we're not careful the other thing is we need to have signals going to each of these so we can't just kinda slap this down here I just kinda had a brainstorm no because we need to wrap this around so then the other thing is we have um, a lever in the middle here to trigger these motors okay technically you can do the rest of this design without a lever to trigger these motors um, because the wiring is going to get in the way anyway so if we have let's say that our color this one's going to be blue because it's going up so technically when we wire everything in there's going to be a wire sitting right here and then this is going to come and kind of wrap around. Might as well do this. This won't change actually. No matter what design we do. I mean, not this we're not going to change it. So, that's going to be bundled cable. And we're going to have this one trunk line of bundled cable kind of coming down here. And let's see. Remember, these are panels. We got to connect them to panels. Um, so this is how this is going to go, okay? And we're going to have the same thing over here, and we're going to use brown because we're going down. So blue heads towards the sky, or up heads towards the sky. So we use the blue wire, and brown heads towards the ground. So we're going to use that. So what's going to happen is. When we send a signal to say, okay, we want to move down, and it's going to trigger the brown wire, which is going to trigger this motor because it's the only one that it's connected to, um, then that is going to shove, that motor is going to shove this motor down, and if I put one here to simulate that, see how it's going to connect to that motor? Technically, the brown one, if we ping it again, will actually turn this motor but if you forget to ping or if the computer program gets out of sync and you forget to ping this this brown line again um, say you're issuing too many move commands and the brown comes through and the motor still moving down and the second brown comes through then when this motor gets into place it's not gonna have another signal to tell it to shove back up and what that'll do is technically now this is a free floating motor and if you try and move in any other direction, now you have a free-floating block that's gonna it's gonna bring your whole system to a halt because the frames don't know how to handle this guy because he's technically, according to them, he's not connected to them anymore. So I don't like doing that. So what I want to do is I like to use um, levers to force them to always go. Um, so like this. So I'm just gonna bring these wings down. And these wings are going to hold a couple different things, I think. 
So we want this one to be adjacent. So this motor is going to come into place here, and we're going to have a lever here that's going to do the same thing that we're doing in the middle up here. Anytime one of these motors slides into the middle, this lever triggers it to slide back. And we're going to do the same thing here. So when this motor gets shoved down into place, it's going to be technically touching this redstone signal. And like it'll come, boop. And then it'll hit this, and this guy will trigger this motor, and it'll shove the motor back up. Um, remember, we have to use a panel to make this guy stay. Um, the other side is going to look kind of similar. I feel like one of these is not really there. Did I actually break it back? Okay. So now with this set up, remember, we're, we're taking this motor and shoving this motor up into place here. So... My lever needs to go right there. Um, and I mean, we could put panels. So it's going to be wiring right here, right here, and right here. And while we're over here, um, this is going to, I forget what direction technically this is. It's going to shift that forward, which is going to drag. Um, all the frames this way. So that's technically forward, I think. We might have to change this. I'm going to brain fart right now. But watch what happens. This is something you got to watch out for. Technically, this white is connected to this one as well. Um, and we don't want that. So we're going to override that. We're going to prevent that with... You know what? I'm actually going to do something different. I'm going to take a I'm going to take a cover, because I like to be able to see. This is kind of annoying. Let's see. We can get away with this, too. We need to prevent this thing from connecting to that motor. So I'm just going to go ahead and put um, yellow to indicate that it's a cover, but that's a cover strip, and it will prevent the wire. And the key thing is it allows us to see which direction this is facing in case we um, accidentally rotate it, or if you come back and you forget, you have to, like, break that cover, and it's, it's kind of... And then you gotta remember to put it back, and it's like, okay, there's no reason for that. All right, so really the only thing left I think we're gonna try and do in this episode is I want to get these things, I want to get these things all connected to power, and then in the next episode maybe we will set up an automatic um, recharging station because this episode's getting kind of long, and that's not gonna be quick. So. We have a couple options with this, and I'm really not, really not sure which is the best one. Because basically, we want these things to always be, even when they're moved, um, except for these guys. We want them to always be getting charged. And before I say that, when we do this in the micro block, when when our system comes out we're gonna have micro block like mega micro block power let's see cable whoops what's blue electric wire it's called wire blue alloy I don't think this will work I think yeah so we can't get those charged unfortunately I was trying to put it there so that the motor in the middle will always have charge too but it, I don't think it'll it usually never runs out um, all right, so let's try and get the sun is setting on us, reminding us that we are um, spinning right now. So we need to connect all these guys. I also thought of the design I think we're going to do for this. Um, if you've ever watched Star Wars, this is probably looking a little bit like something you recognize. So... Let's try, we're going to wire, oops, we're going to wire these guys all in. Okay, this side is easy because everything's on the level to start with. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to have to connect these. This is going to grab the ground, I think. It's going to kind of suck. Yeah, it is. But we can, we can solve that. That's not too big of a deal, but what I want to do is, I 
I think if we do this, technically I could put another battery box here. But I think this is going to be easier. Because if we put a battery box down here, we're going to need to replace the battery power in it. And that's not going to be easy. So what we're going to do is on the other end over here, um, we're going to rig up a battery recharging system that will remotely tie into this array here so that this thing can be anywhere in the world even buried way underground and it will still always have power unless you hit like 20 straight days of rainstorms which is yeah it's worth the risk so now the only thing is we gotta power these guys down here and we need to power them up there see this is a pain right now because this thing will get moved into place and right now this is in the way so we can't we need we want the redstone signal but we also need blutricity and we can't share we can't share the cable crap oh wait we 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 don't need, we don't need that because these will share okay okay I was thinking like this is impossible. Uh, there's no way to do that because they're running out of room. But I forgot um, these guys will actually share. When this one moves up, it will get charged by these. And when it's down here, we just need to charge it. So we're gonna do a little some disaction right here. And we didn't actually need that other second piece, but we are all about overkill. And we could do this for symmetry's sake, but then it would sever. Like, if we put something here, it's going to cut that line off. So we'll just have to deal with the symmetrical issues. Now, the only thing we need to do is hook these pigs into the main wings. The other thing this is going to do is give us, like, like a nice little channel. Um, if we stretch this whole thing out, it'll give us a nice little channel where we can <clears throat> walk down in the engine compartment and see what's going on because every once in a while when these things run inevitably either you will put a block in the way or a block will get in the way or a motor will run out of charge or something that's the other reason I insist on using these handles because what you can do is like if this motor goes and moves into place and gets stuck because say you go up and then as you're going up somebody comes along and puts a block in front well now all of a sudden um, your your motor can't move the frames because technically the frames are being obstructed. So you can go around, you can find that, and then you can trigger this handle, and it'll trigger the motor again. You don't have to worry about um, doing anything crazy. You, I mean, you just got to find it that one time. All right. So now the only thing left to do is let's try. We need to actually tie these into the top, into the main, to the main system. So if we're gonna come down like this, um, again, these can't share, can they? That's very rude. So we can go for now. Let's just do this for now. We're going to come up this side with bundled cable on this side. And we're going to go, what happens if we do this? Oh, come on, seriously. It's just obnoxious. We'll do so much for using minimum amount of resources. Actually. We need to connect so this so right now we're connected in two places technically I don't need this block but we're gonna run wire down it so I'm gonna put it there like our uh, our blue alloy is gonna come down here and then I'll oh, poop this can be ugly I apologize we might we might have to address this. <laughs> we have to address this later on. 
This is kind of ugly right now. But we'll just go. We'll just roll with it. I wonder if I could come down this side. No. We gotta get the wire out of there. Well, we could come like this. This would work. Kills symmetry. It kills it quite dead. And then... You know what we might just do? We might have a... I think what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, a little relay controller. So this is going to be a computer craft right there. That'll allow me to do this. So next we're going to have to do computer craft. Which I, pr I promise that'll be easy. Well, I don't promise that. I'll try and make it easy. Um, and let's go. So this is like kind of ridiculous. Not exactly what I wanted, but if I can think of something by the next episode, then uh, we'll change it. But this is going to give power to the people. Mostly gross because it's completely asymmetrical. And we have to come this way because these cables will intersect with each other. There is it's there is beauty in asymmetry, but sometimes it's kinda hard to find. Okay, so we have I think power going to all the engines now. And these are going to come up. They're going to connect to our battery box. Which the system for that is going to be a little herp derpy. You need to be really, 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 really careful when you're breaking stuff around this main engine frame. Because if you break one of these that has a cover inside of it, you have to break everything and restart. So, okay. All right. We're going to get wrapping this up in a second. So I'm going to put a tube frame here. That will make more sense, hopefully, in the next episode. And then I'm going to cover, cover that up. That might even change in the next episode, to be honest with me. To be honest with you, rather. Um, get rid of that. Actually, for the sanity of symmetry, we'll keep it. Ooh, looking ugly. And then up at the top here, we're going to put... We're going to put... Alright, so we're going to put... Let's just put that there for now. And connect those wires. So now everything in here should have power All right and to wrap this episode up let's um sorry I'm like breathing into my microphone here let's throw a battery in here and oh, man, I get so much crap I don't need orange wool anymore we're just gonna charge all the engines really quick and do whoa my bad see it's gonna drain them man it's gonna drain these things pretty quick um, this thing will take a little while to get rolling but once it's good and you can jump start you can put a bunch of solar panels on here to jump start it if, if you really wanted to but we shouldn't need to do that so at this point we should see blue, 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 blue. Every engine that we can see should have blue. Um, and bingo. And then these are going to move down. When this one moves down, we can test that really quick. And this should get blue. Oh, 
that actually. Well, there we go. And we should blue, good. And we'll just test this one over here. Let me turn that off. Blue, good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so at this point, we have all of our engines set up. We have all of our blue tricity set up. Um, we have our overrides, or not our overrides, but our, our uh, whatever the heck, the things that are forcing the motors to run there and there. Everything should be joined. We can follow the whole frame. Everything's connected. There are no loose um, covers kicking around anywhere. And the moment of truth. Let me see if I wire this. Let's see. Blue. Let's trigger some blue action. And we can actually Let's see if we can make this thing go up. Oh yeah, folks. We have achieved liftoff. <laughs> Just <laughs> clear all these ridiculous blocks off here. And we're going to put covers on here so that we can touch down, we can land this thing on a platform and not suck the whole platform back up when we launch. But there we go. We have, you're not going to leave this normally, but these are just um, for making sure. We should also be able to go down. Yes. Victory for the horde. All right. There we go, folks. Let's put Brown back in there. We now can move up and down. Left and right also work. Let's see. If there's an easy way to trigger that. Oh, crap. That was a boo-boo. Also, that's what I mean. See, see now one of these blocks is technically loose. I have to break this one. Pulse this guy to shift down. Then we got to put this other frame motor back. This is why you got to be careful. Not just willy nilly. That should not happen. Err, my goodness. I did it again. Crap, we're going to stick to the bottom again, crying out loud. Alright, let's break this, because this thing keeps connecting and I don't want it to. There we go. We have movement. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So, next time we're going to come back, we're going to get all this thing wired up. Oh, crap. We touched down. <laughs> We touched down, but there you go. You have movement. This is going to be the frame. This is going to be the engine room for our ship that we're going to build. We're going to add a buttload of things to the ship, maybe some cannons, some lasers, pew, 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 maybe a mining drill. Let us know what you think we should add. Let us know if we missed anything, we confused anything. The next time we're going to take and figure out a way to automate this battery thing. Um, and there is a, an easy solution for that. It's a little weird to think through, but we'll get it. We'll get it all set. Um, and there you go. There's your engine. Hope this helped. Hope this was interesting. And we're going to go next time, episode two. I'm going to pimp that junk out and get it to do some a little more legit things. Maybe tie it into some computer craft. We're definitely going to tie it into computer craft. Um, we're going to have like a flight control panel um, going forward. But we may not get into that next episode. Um, and we may. So we'll see. Anyway, stick around. Let us know what you think. And thanks for watching. Check us out at the minecrafters.com. That's mind with a D. If you were wondering what those uh, cool things were, the cool screens, they are information panels. Check out our tutorial on how to make them look that cool. Also, we live stream uh, our server play every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash the mind, mind crafters. And we are on Facebook, TheMinecrafters.com, and Twitter on Twitter slash Ingram, and that is I-N-G-R-I-M-M-M. -M -M. Okay, and hopefully this tutorial has been helpful. See you around, and stay poised.